So another big weekend in the Premier League. Uh, lots of games, lots of stories, lots of narratives. But one we actually want to focus in on is actually Aston Villa, who obviously beat uh, Arsenal 2 0. A game that has huge ramifications for the title race, but also one that has huge impact on Aston Villa's hopes of finishing in the top four. That result now puts Villa three points above Tottenham, who still have a game in hand on their Birmingham City rivals. But Ben, you were watching the game quite closely, shall we say. Um, perhaps not delighted with how it played out, but you know, having watched Villa um, so close up, what did you make of the performance? What did you think of the team? And obviously just your general thoughts as how Unai Emery's team are playing this season. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was at the stadium at the game. Um, I think going into the game, many people expected that um, Aston Villa might be suffering with fatigue or tiredness, having played on a Thursday night. Um, Arsenal had two days extra to prepare having played on Tuesday against Bayern but it was the complete opposite that unfolded um, in the first half Arsenal played pretty well had the better of the chances Villa had one sort of chance that came out of a bit of a freak incident where it came off Zinchenko's back and then Watkins was really unlucky not to score off the post but Arsenal were the better side had some really good opportunities second half was a complete different game I've not seen Arsenal play on the back foot that much other than maybe the Man City game where they went there all season Aston Villa dominated um, and very much deserved to win the game. Uh, Arsenal looked out on their feet. They looked so tired in the second half. There was no pressure on the ball. And Aston Villa just grew and grew into the game. Um, and you could see it coming, to be honest, the way the game was going. And they got their reward at the end. They got their um, two goals. And it's a massive win for them uh, in terms of their charge to get that fourth spot. Um, we know with it was a bad week for English teams. Um, I think Ewan's going to touch on that shortly, um, which may, may mean the fifth doesn't get the Champions League spot. So a massive win for Aston Villa um, and a deserved win and wor worrying result for Arsenal. Yeah, it's so interesting because, you know, Villa have kind of threatened to kind of break that top four monopoly for some time now. Every every time they get close to it, they seem to kind of drop two or three points here or there. They kind of drift off and maybe kind of flow out of people's interest or consciousness. But if you actually look at how many points each manager has won in the Premier League since Unai Emery came to Aston Villa, he's actually sitting fourth. Uh, Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta and Jurgen Klopp are the only head coaches who have picked up more points. Fifth placed Eric Ten Hag has picked up 10 fewer points than him. And if you actually look at how many points they're picking up per game, uh, Unai Emery is sitting on 1.93 and Eric Ten Hag's all the way down on 1.75. So it actually suggests that um, Emery has been quite comfortably the fourth best manager in the Premier League since he's been there. Of course, other managers have come in since and uh, are doing just as well. Obviously, Ange Postacoglu at Tottenham is probably a good example of that. But the other stat I actually wanted to bring up as well is that if you look at Aston Villa's record against the, the big six, as we call them, um, since Emery took over, um, they've really given as well as they've, they've got. And they had a pretty rough run of it uh, last month where they lost, obviously, a few games against... Um, um, Manchester City is the one that comes to mind. Are they Man United as well? But since Emery's been in charge, they've won 28 points against the big six and lost 29. Uh, and that just goes to, goes to show how neck and neck it is. So, you know, we're, we're not just talking about a mid-table club here who, you know, are picking up the easy points against the bottom, bottom half of the league. We're talking about a team here who really do go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big teams, as we saw against Arsenal on Sunday, Ewan, and... Um, you know, know how to pick up those big results and it now means that as well as the title race we've now got this fascinating uh, run in between Tottenham and Aston Villa uh, I can actually quickly run through the remaining fixtures just to remind the listeners here or, or viewers rather um, Aston Villa have Bournemouth at home Chelsea at home Brighton away Liverpool at home and Crystal Palace away which you might think that's a really tough run but then you take a look at Tottenham's run in which is Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, Liverpool away, Burnley at home, Manchester City at home, and then they finish up with Sheffield United away. And, you know, you'd I'd love your thoughts as to how you think both teams look right now, how both clubs look, um, which one you think will finish fourth, and whether you actually think fifth place could actually still grab a Champions League spot. Yeah, I think after the weekend, it was a, a statement win for Aston Villa, especially with the, the man who got Tottenham defeat in Newcastle, I think that could be quite a bad one for them. I think they've got a really tough uh, run over the course of the season. As far as they've got to play some of the, the best sides in the league, and I think they'll take that four spot. Um, it was a bit of a worry a couple of weeks ago about you know the fact they were playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. It's not exactly easy to do, but 
think they showed against Arsenal the weekend that they can they can handle that and there's probably no better manager um, in the world to kind of know how to use his squad in that situation than Emery who's obviously a master in um, Europa League football so yeah I thought it was a big win for them and also in terms of the coefficient race it's not going to be a, a race to see who finishes fourth and fifth it's also going to be a race to see who gets that second Champions League spot between um, the Bundesliga and the Premier League you know a couple of weeks ago we Everybody would have thought the Premier League would wrap it up pretty easily, but they had a terrible um, last match day in European competitions. Now Germany have actually you know, consolidated their, their place in second. So, you know, not just looking at the Premier League table, we're also going to look at the coefficient table. It's going to be a real nervous time for Tottenham and Sports I think there's going to be a lot of positivity um, since he came in. You know, he says the right things a lot of the time, plays really exciting attacking football. But ultimately, if they miss out in the Champions League this season, I think it'll be a massive failure. Um, for both Tottenham and Dan's Foster Coglu considering where they were in you know, January, February time. Yeah, Ben, I guess it's quite a good reflection of how good those top three teams have been this season that we have a very strong Tottenham and a very strong Aston Villa who are both having good seasons by just about any metric but it turns out that one of them could end up finishing the season not empty-handed because they'll still have Europa League and you know still a lot. Of the, there's a lot of money that goes with finishing fifth but they won't have that Champions League spot. They won't have that fourth place and the, the the sense of accomplishment that comes with it. Yeah, I think another way to look at it, look at it as well, is a lot of those teams underneath Aston Villa and Tottenham, I think, have been really poor, which has allowed them to sort of have quite an easy ride. And it looks like you'd be very surprised if they don't finish fourth or fifth, which other way around, come the end of the season. Obviously, Man United, we've spoken about them a lot. They've had a really poor season. That was evident to see again at Bournemouth on Saturday. Um, Newcastle have picked up again recently but their injuries killed them and had a really poor a sort of mid-season Brighton have been really inconsistent um, West Ham have struggled to juggle Europe and the Premier League just thinking then what, what could be interesting Aston Villa if they do end up finishing fifth they could essentially be fighting for whether that's Champions League or not in, the, in Europe themselves this season because they were the only team to win their first game obviously in the Conference League last week so that could be an extra motivation for them if it's not already just to win that competition. They could actually go and fire that competition, get themselves Champions League football next season. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, almost single handedly dragging the English coefficient along with them uh, in the Conference League. Well, you guys should obviously definitely let us know what you think of Aston Villa this season. Do you think they deserve top four? What do you think's changed since Unai Emery came in charge? And looking at their run in alongside Tottenham's, who do you think will finish fourth? Who do you think will finish fifth? Comment below, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, we'll speak to you soon.